have filed a lawsuit today on behalf of two uh, wonderful Odessa families. Uh, both families were victims of the mass shooting that occurred last year on August 31st, in which seven folks from Odessa were killed and 20-something other people were wounded. Uh, these families have asked me to file this lawsuit to seek justice on their behalf for the unimaginable losses that they suffered as a result of this tragedy. What they want is accountability. What they want is for someone to consider the value of these lives that were lost. What they want is for someone to consider the fact that they that not a day goes by that they don't think about and yearn for their loved one. What they want a, an Hector County jury to consider is the effect of losing a father on two young children, the effect of losing a son, the effect of losing a daughter and actually witnessing the death of a daughter and then having that daughter scream out for help and be left on the sidewalk until the wee hours of the morning. And that's all that this family wants, is someone to hold the people responsible for this terrible tragedy accountable. As a side note to this, we also hope that the powers that be would consider expanding the law, not passing new laws, but expanding the law so that the loopholes that exist in the law today are covered. Statistics show that 97% of the people in America, and I'm counting Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Libertarians, everywhere, everyone, 97% say that there should be universal background checks. And we believe that when the facts of this case come out, it's going to be shown that if, a, if that law were in effect, this gun sale would never have occurred. Because as you probably have heard, the shooter had already failed a background check when he tried to purchase a gun years before. And the situation that, that occurred, the sale of this gun by Mr. Brazil, who is one of the parties to defend us to the case, there was no requirement that he do a background check, and he didn't do one. So we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, I have Carla here next to me. Carla is the sister of Joey Griffith, that was one of the victims. And then we also have uh, Layla, mom and brother here. Nathan is also a part of the case. In an, in a, in an effort to shield his sister from the shooter, he was also injured in the shooting. Um, so, any questions that you, you may have, we'll be glad to answer. Talk about the goals that you guys hope to get accomplished from this. Well, number one, the goal is for people to value these lives that were lost. And in doing that, they're going to have to hold accountable the people that are responsible for what happened. The defendants in our case are Mr. Brazil, who was the gun, actual gun seller, and Anderson Manufacturing, who was actually the manufacturer of the gun parts that Mr. Brazil purchased, advertised on the internet for sale, and assembled guns and sold to all comers. As you probably know, the shooter walks into Mr. Brazil's house, and he's got two teardrop tattoos on his face. Now, my experience has been those teardrops represent lives. And that would cause me, and I think it would cause any ordinarily prudent individual to ask questions. What about those tattoos? Why do you have those? Should that be something that me, that I as a gun seller should consider before I take your money and send you out of here with an assault weapon? with 30 capacity clips.
this might not be a good question for you, but maybe for the family. Talk about all that went into this. Um, of course, when you guys told us about the press conference yesterday, there were a lot of negative feedback on social media. So just talk about maybe the greater to the family. I didn't read the negative comments. I, I expected that there would be. There always is. You know, it's easy to sit off in the bleachers and take pot shots at the players out on the field. Everybody's a Monday morning quarterback. But I challenge any one of those negative individuals to put themselves in the place of any member of this family and tell us that they wouldn't do the same thing with a straight face. There's not a one of them that wouldn't say, I've lost something precious to me, and I'm entitled to some justice. And that's all we're here about. This is a question for um, Mr. Phil's sister. Um, Carla. Is it all those that want to bring uh, your brother back, does it give you some type of relief? I've had a lot of people say to me, you know, Joe can't speak for himself, and that's exactly it, he can't. But even were he here and he could speak, I do not speak for Joe. I speak for me, and my heart feels convicted by my God to speak out against this for other people. We as a family have come to our moment of great refusal. We refuse to sit back while Congress sits on HRA legislation that would have provided universal background checks on all gun sales, including and especially private. We refuse to sit back while unlicensed assemblers of guns and gun sellers sell guns to people like Seth the Tour, who, who come to them with teardrop tattoos, disheveled, a long history of criminal criminal uh, behavior and, and mental illness, who failed a background check in 2014 when he tried to purchase from a licensed seller. Seth the tour killed seven people, including my little brother and this beautiful 15-year-old girl. And Marcus Brazil put the gun in his hand. Carlo, when will justice be served for you and your family? Like, will it be at the end of this lawsuit if you win? Will it be when HR or another, you know, kind of reform is passed? What, what is justice to you? Justice is such a term of fluidity, right? None of this will ever bring my brother back. My brother will never walk his daughter down the aisle. There are so many things. My brother had a life and it was stolen from him. But I know with 100% certainty that I cannot... I cannot sit idly by and just be sad, and just be sad. I can't watch on the news any more kids being killed in schools, any more people being slaughtered in churches and synagogues. I cannot stand by. Will I feel better? Will I feel like some positive has changed when HR8 passes? Yes. We need that to happen, you guys. And people say, you know what? A criminal's going to get a gun anyway. Yes, yes, he or she will. But then we can prosecute the person that sold the gun to them without a background check. That's what we're fighting for. That's all we're fighting for. The, this, just the devastation that our families collectively, and even just anybody in this community that was driving down 42nd that day with bullets flying, has suffered such devastation. When are enough of us going to step up and say, this is enough? There's only so much you can see on the news and stop and feel sad for someone and then just go on about your day. Does it have to be one of your loved ones? Does it have to be? Because I was that person too. I was that person too. But I am irreparably and profoundly changed. And I would ask that those of you that it has not happened to, that you would have enough empathy and enough courage to stand up and say, this is wrong. This is wrong. We will not stop. We refuse to be silent until Marcus Brazil and people like him are held accountable for their actions. We will not rest. John, is this more about background checks or being punitive against Brazil and the Well, it's certainly to hold them accountable and not to punish them. We don't have the ability to punish them, but it's certainly to hold them accountable monetarily. And it's also, as you've heard clearly from Carla, 
we'd love to see legislation passed that would close this loophole. Now, there's not been any federal charges in a year not against yet. Mr. Brazil. Right. Some would say he didn't do anything wrong. So what are you going to bring to court to say this is what we think he did do wrong? Well, he didn't violate a criminal statute. That's absolutely true. But we believe he's clearly negligent in selling a gun to the gentleman that he's in. I'm going to use gentleman very loosely. To the man that he sold a gun to. Uh, no question about it. This man should have asked questions before he took his money and sold him the gun. And why did you choose this weekend to make this announcement? Well, as you know, we're coming up on the one-year anniversary. Uh, this family has waited anxiously for something to happen. And nothing has happened, which is part of the reason they talk to me. Let's see if we can't make something happen. And that's why we're doing this. I want to provide closure to this family, as much closure as I can possibly provide. Carla, what were your expectations? What did you expect to happen before this? I wanted to see him arrested for something. You know, I mean, Seth the Tour received his punishment in a hail of bullets by police that day. But Marcus Brazil was able to get up each day and go about his life without a care in the world as to the devastation. My mom will never breathe right again. She will never breathe right again. But Marcus Brazil goes on as though nothing has happened. So because HRA was not passed, and we cannot prosecute him criminally, that's why we're here today, to at least hold him, hold his feet to the fire civilly. And then my, my ultimate goal is that this lawsuit would elevate the vital importance of HRA. Carlo, what do you want a death sentence to take away from your lawsuit as they reflect on the anniversary of the event? Uh, what do I want? What, what do you want uh, locals, like Odessa, to take away from this lawsuit as they reflect on the mass shooting? You know, somebody asked a question earlier about the negative backlash on social media. And I read one thing, and immediately it hurt my spirit. And immediately my heart started racing, and my stomach started turning, and I said, I felt God say, don't, don't. So what I would like for people in Odessa to try to understand is that they're not in our shoes. I would like for people to understand the importance of legislation and the impact that it has to, that it has to all of us on the daily, right? And listen, I'm a gun owner. I support the Second Amendment, and I believe wholeheartedly that we can still respect the Second Amendment and have reasonable common sense laws that protect all of us, all of us out here. And that is truly what I would hope when the people would open their eyes and recognize. We are not trying to take away all your guns. It's just such paranoia that I can't wrap my head around. I just want people to open their eyes. Can you talk more about the timing of all this? Because the investigation Why file this now before the investigation has concluded? Why file this now before the investigation has concluded? Why file this now before the We're not guaranteed that anything's going to happen of the investigation. We're not guaranteed that anyone's going to act. I mean, the only thing we've seen is they seized 29 guns that apparently now there's a controversy about whether those belong to Mr. Brazil or whether those were inherited by his wife or what it was. Uh, we've asked the federal, we're not criticizing the federal government, we, but we've asked them for information as, as you would in any lawsuit, and they're not providing it because they, they have an ongoing investigation. Uh, if they file criminal charges, that's going to take care of the wrongs that they committed against the, the public. What we're talking about is the wrongs that were committed against these two families. I, you know, these two families are heroes. These two families could have been any other family in Odessa, Texas. Carla's brother was with his family going down the road to go have a family picture made. The shooter pulled up beside the car and pointed his gun at her little nephew and then turned it and shot Joey through the door. 
Layla was at the car dealership with her family shopping for a new pickup truck, minding their own business, having a fun family outing, and the guy pulls up in the parking lot and starts shooting. And Layla gets shot and killed. It could have been any one of the folks watching this tape. It could have been any one of you. And all they're doing is try to make, trying to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And I guarantee you, their detractors will someday, someday look back and say, you know what, they probably did a good thing because they're trying to do good. Carla, have you reached out to any of the other victims' families? And if so, what were their reactions to this suit being filed? I tried uh, finding people via messenger. Um, I really did not have a lot of luck finding anyone. I was fortunate enough to find Joanna because, um, you know, her daughter was a student at the school district and I worked at the school district. And we met at a dinner that was put together by Reverend Weeks. Um, I haven't had a lot of luck. No. Is that something you'd be open to, other families also, you know, joining you guys in this fight? Yeah, I mean, listen, we're all in this fight. You and you and you and you, we're all in this fight, whether you know it or not. We're all in this fight. Whether your name's on this on this petition or not, you're in this fight. You're in this fight. We don't know if somebody's going to roll through here and start blasting bullets. That's the world that we live in today, and there's too many of us turning a blind eye to it. Marcus Brazil has blood on his hands. He has blood on his hands, and he's going to be held accountable. If Marcus is watching this right now, what is your message to him? My message to you, Marcus Brazil, is that you don't get to sit back on your haunches and sell a gun to anybody walking into your home or via Craigslist or through the mail or however you go about it. You don't get to do that and not face some kind of charge, whether civically or criminally. You don't get to do that because you have messed with the wrong family and we are not going to take this line down. Carla, all of West Texas is going to be thinking about you and 31 other families this weekend. How's your head? How's your heart? How are you going to deal with this weekend? I have, as you can see, a lot of rage about what happened. Um, but I have been very blessed to be surrounded by family and friends, new friends, old friends, and I am surrounded by just the most amazing support system. I never have to cry alone. I never have to rage alone. I never have to fight my battles alone. And on Monday, I'm taking off from work because I have the best boss in all the land. And my family and I are going to golf because my brother was a golfer with a PGA card. And I don't even like to golf. <laughs> and I'm not good at it. But we're going to golf, and we're going to spend the day just thinking about and honoring Joey. You know, you've touched on how God has helped you. What is your, and you, you talked about how you have a lot of rage right now. But when you lie down at night, what is your prayer? I want to always be an open book with people. I got saved when I was nine. I'm not the best Christian ever. I don't go to church every Sunday like I should. When my brother was murdered, about a month later, I just was so enraged that I could not hear. I couldn't hear him or feel him anymore. Because I just was like, why didn't you intervene? Why didn't you intervene? This is my sister, Marcia. But I will say, that there is no darker, more empty feeling than that feeling of separation from Him. And when I couldn't pray, and I couldn't for a while, my prayer when I couldn't was, please let me feel and hear you again. And with the support of Mr. Sloan and my dear friend Marty Lee Wright, I have been able to feel him again. And so if you're out there and you're a, a spiritual person and you feel a distance 
and you feel that feeling that you just can't get it back, but you want to, but you're just so mad, don't stop asking him to help you feel him. Don't stop asking him to help you hear him because he has not le left you even when you feel like you can't feel him. And I feel him today. I feel him today. And we can feel it more if we can have some legislation changed. If we can have background checks on all private sales. 94% of Americans agree with background checks on all private gun sales. You have to have a background check when you want to work at Starbucks. Why don't you have to have a background check when you're buying an AR-15 or an AM-15? Background checks on all gun sales. If a background check had occurred on this gun sale, then my brother would still be alive, and so would Layla Hernandez. And it, but it, even, if it, even if he'd gotten a gun anyway, because people love to say, oh, he would have gotten a gun anyway. Gun. We would be able to prosecute Marcus Brazil criminally. Listen, money's money. Care it's about not money. about that. It's about it's about accountability. It's about and I would much rather he be in jail today. I would much rather, but he can't. He's not in jail, so this is the second best thing. Thank you, guys, ladies and men. Is there, is there a way we can obtain the suit here today? Yes, you sir. Guys? I have a copy for you. Thank you. I sure do. Mr. Sloan, do you yes, know sir. if parts manufactured by Annex Manufacturing is used to assemble aiders rifle? That's our information, yes, sir. And it's our information further that Mr. Brazil was one of their regular customers, which to me would make bells ring and think maybe we ought to check this guy out. Okay.